Hey folks, and welcome to the Sorcast. Today's episode, Diablo 3, the review. So, where to begin with the controversial Diablo 3? Why controversial? Well, for anyone coming to the game now, you're fine. But let's go back to how it was when the game launched. The first 10 days or so of the game were just riddled with server problems. This led to many players on the official forums looking for refunds and complaining vociferously about the state of the servers. Players who played early on, especially on launch night, will be more than acquainted with errors 37 and 75. Attempts to get onto servers were nigh on impossible at first night, and most players were willing to give players the benefit of the doubt. Especially as it was launch night, it was undoubtedly a popular and much anticipated game, and server problems for online games upon release are pretty much par for the course these days. But unfortunately for Blizzard, it didn't stop there. The server problems continued, and they continued to carry on for pretty much another 10 days. Yep, that is a week and a half of players constantly losing connection, not being able to log in afterwards, losing achievements, gear and progress as characters were sometimes rolled back two hours or more upon the server's restart. The ironic thing is those who complain to Blizzard the most about the single player portion of the game being server based and therefore online are probably the same players that gave Blizzard reason to do that in the first place. These are the Diablo 2 players that hacked their characters, duped items and gathered the best gear in the game with minimal effort. Thankfully though, all of the server issues by and large now seem sorted. That of course means that you're pretty much guaranteed to get online now and play the game whenever you want. The gameplay is very simplistic and straightforward, but what it does, it does with aplomb. It's simplistic in that you click on enemies, you hit them. You click on them again, you hit them some more. But the execution of the mechanics is a complete joy to work with. Combat feedback is visceral, meaningful and immediate. Uh, I mean the physical side of combat is very satisfying to execute. Um, the method by which gear drops and the feel of the combat are both compelling. Both combine to make for a very addictive experience, from whirlwinding through a large pack of normal level enemies and obliterating them, which is really satisfying, to taking on the game's bigger bosses means you'll always be wanting to play for that 5 more minutes every time. When a game has that feel about it, you know you're playing something really enjoyable, and Diablo 3 has that in spades. From deserts to ghost towns, to wintry mountain capes, to the depths of hell, you never once feel like you're out of place, or that the music isn't appropriate for the locale. The graphics too here play a part, and the artwork and general style is that of a somewhat more mature World of Warcraft, in that the style is somewhat stylized, but less so than why. The character models are appropriately detailed for the level and distance at which you'll be viewing them, and as usual, spell effects and gear upgrades do their jobs very well. The online nature of the single player game means that unless you specifically opt out of it, which you can do, friends are immediately able to jump into your game, regardless of level, and help you out at any point. For a lot of players this will be where the meat of the game lies, and it's easy to see why. Teaming up with up to three other players will see boss health pools increase in size appropriately, meaning nothing is ever too much of a pushover. As usual, playing with other people will increase your enjoyment exponentially. You can also open up your game to the public, so that random players will be able to jump into your game as well. PvP has not been included in the game at launch, and Blizzard have stated that this will be included in a future patch. However, there are a lot of people waiting for them to do so, and the sooner they get it out there the better in my opinion. The gold currency auction house was operational from day one. Well, as operational as the rest of the game was anyway. Prices vary enormously, which is partly due to the market waiting to stabilise, as well as the huge variation of stats and sockets that randomly get generated on gear. However, it's one of the few gold sinks in the game, and once you get your blacksmith and jeweler both maxed out, it becomes the only gold sink outside of the negligible repair costs. The real money auction house has not as yet been implemented and has been pushed back a couple of times since launch already. And as of the time of the creation of this video is still another two or so weeks away. Presumably Blizzard want to make sure that everything is as stable and reliable as possible before getting into this very controversial area. Lest they go through another period akin to that of the launch week, but this time it would involve real money which could get sticky very quickly. 
In conclusion, the game is excellent. Launch week issues aside and largely sorted, the experience is slick, smooth and satisfying. Combat is fierce and compelling and that 5 more minutes syndrome ensures longevity as well as the ever harder difficulty modes. The future inclusion of the Real Money Auction House and PvP will only increase that longevity. Overall I'd rate this game 9 out of 10. It is an excellent game for both single player and co-op game with friends or random strangers. And that was the Diablo 3 review. And if you're wondering why this commentary has sounded a wee bit restrained, it's because I'm using a microphone attached to my headset, which means that it has a tendency to pop quite often. Uh, means I can't get too loud on it. And I hope to have that re rectified fairly soon and get a proper microphone. As usual, don't forget to rate and subscribe. And thank you for watching.